My name is Brooks Mastin, and I live here in Portland, Oregon, along with all these other old-time people. I'm going to show you how to make a banjo within a half hour. You start with wood. What we have in here is a specially built room in my house for drying and curing. This is a very exciting room for me. I love figured wood and just wood in general. <laughs> and I draw a line down the middle, and ha! And suddenly we have two. Nice pieces, look at the color in there, a little bit of figure, red. I take this highly accurate template that I made off of Taylor Grover's old Dobson at Weezer. Ha! Voila! In order to have your space work properly, it needs to be clutter free. This truss rod fits in this truss rod slot. Oh, oh wait, pull it off. Before that happens, it needs ears. These are the ears, they make the headstock wide enough. Once this is thicker, as seen in figure B, the headstock, plate, cover, piece of wood, cut out nicely in the right shape. I mean, you take the rasp and you start carving the neck. I got some fancy sandpaper over here. And then after all the sanding and polishing and oiling and everything, oh, oh my goodness, it comes off and you have something that's like this. I have this tool that drills a hole in the back of the heel here, with this at a special angle, a dowel of hardwood that I make, goes in the hole, and it is the whole dowel stick construction neck on its way. One of the fine adornments on Brooks banjos is the simpleness of them all. The inlaid Indian head painting. Just lovely. I have my fancy little hammer and I fit the tuning machine in the new little tapered hole and give it a good tap, fit through their hole and screw on. And then I make these little nuts here for the strings to fit through. I make them out of ebony because I like the tone that ebony produces over the sound of bone. Okay, as you can see there's a slight difference between this neck and this neck headstock. This one has the tuners in it. I have a special device that drills me four nice holes in the top of here. The other big, huge half of the banjo is the rim. This is a, you can see, a walnut color die. I also use some burgundy color. I seal them with a oil sealer. You can fall in the lake with it and your banjo will still be fine. The next thing that happens to these rims, after the finish is all done, and they're nice and polished and finished, holes get drilled into the rim, and then these shoes get attached. And since I'm looking for these banjos to look old before you even get them, it takes a little bit of the finish being on them and them being handled around the shop before they start to look old. To make a tension hoop, I take this 8 inch by half inch brass solid round and I bend it and bend it until it's perfectly round. And I make the little rivets and a hammer in, and that holds it all together. These brackets fit into this hole like that. And once all of this is said and done, we get to a part where I have stretched the head on it, and it's got all the shoes in it. Before this head gets stretched on here, I cut this hole. It fits perfectly to the rim. My favorite part of making the banjo is the very last moments. Once you get the tuners in there, and the holes and built it all together and polish however you want them, and the nuts are in there, and file down to fit the strings, and you get the bridge here in place, and you attach the tailpiece. What we have here now is a more a banjo in the completed stage, but you can see that this heel is fit right up perfectly on there. And it's ready for plonking. And if you want to find my stuff, look for brooksbanjos.com on the World Wide Web. Yeah.